The Steven Universe movie is coming. 2019 will see the first feature-length Steven Universe movie hitting the big screen. And by big screen, I probably mean the small screen. There is no plan for a theatrical run of this film. Yet, you guys may be aware that I've organized a social media campaign, Steven Saturday. Every Saturday, just tweet fan art, theories, whatever, as long as it's Steven Universe related, with the hashtag Steven Saturday and tag Cartoon Network, letting them know that you want to see the Steven Universe movie in theaters. Likely as a limited release, similar to My Hero Academia, Two Heroes, or any of the most recent Dragon Ball films. That being said, this movie has a lot to live up to. I mean, a Steven Universe movie. Oh my goodness. This show already has a huge following and many great episodes that has cinematic moments. Mr. Greg, Earthlings, a single pearl rose reunited? While opinions on the plot may differ, you cannot deny that all the aforementioned contains some of the greatest moments in modern day animation. But then again, I guess that's an opinion. Nevertheless, how can the Steven Universe movie live up to its full potential? Well, there's 10 things I feel it needs in order to not just be a great film, but a great Steven even universe film. Something that both the casual audience and the hardcore fans can enjoy. Walking away with a huge smile on their face. Now this list is in no particular order, but I did put some thought into ranking it. Most of these, however, are of equal importance. Before we dive in, I just want to remind you guys that we put a bunch of designs back up on our Teespring. I'm always feeling blue, transport black and blue, retro primo, let's talk with Tom's shirt, plan of attack, the diamond crashers, and so much more. So link to those in the description. Get them before they're gone. Also, special thanks to my cat issue for this thumbnail. Now, like the previous thumbnails, we actually didn't commission him for this. This was actually an original piece on his social media, but he was kind enough to give us consent to use it and also format it to better work as a YouTube thumbnail. Check him out. His Twitter is MyCatSU and his Tumblr is VintageCatSU. All of that out of the way, let the games begin. Kicking it off, a good villain with a good motivation. The Steven Universe movie teaser did not give a lot away. However, the biggest takeaway was that this film has an antagonist. One that they wanted to hype up from the get-go. The top two candidates for this villain's identity is Morganite and Red Diamond, and I think Morganite could very much be correct. But honestly, that alone doesn't really sell me on the movie. Yeah, yeah, she has that spoiled rich brat cackle, but Aquamarine already has that role filled. Adding a new gem into the mix, especially after the introduction of White Diamond, the Cooniverse has to bring their A-game. I mean, this gem to carry a movie has to live up to the likes of Jasper, Aquamarine, Holly Blue Agate, and Hessenite. So not only does the personality have to be something unique and memorable, with a motivation compelling enough to make it believable that she would rear her head now. Hessenite, for example, is one of my favorite Steve Universe villains. Not only is she one of the few elite gems we've seen with a god-tier voice actress, but she had a simple yet good motivation. She wanted to to retrieve her light prism, something that has grown a fond attachment to Steven and the Crystal Gems. Despite having an investment in the light prism, she didn't really have much regard for what the light prism wanted, and her fate was pretty ambiguous by the end. Not to mention, since she partook in the gem war, there were personal stakes for Garnet and Pearl. Actually, both Hess Knight and Save Light as a whole did a great job of checking off two other points on this list, and you'll know them when the time comes. The villain of this film should have some beef with Rose Quartz or Pink Diamond. However, at this point in the series, after the events of Lex from the Homeworld, although we'll probably have to wait for the resolution of this arc to see how Homeworld views Pink Diamond or Rose Quartz, I don't think this villain's motivation should be tied strictly to the gem war. That, oh, I hate Rose Quartz, and that's Rose Quartz right there. If Homeworld believes Pink Diamond's alive, then this villain's beef should be with Pink Diamond. If she wants to harm the Earth or any organic beings that reside on the planet, it makes sense she would look down on Pink Diamond for one to defend such a planet. Much like the homeworld gems I listed earlier, I want to walk away wanting to see more of this movie's villain. And for the love of God, please don't pull a square at eye and have this movie's villain just bubble to the temple. Have a more creative resolution. But speaking of characters and their importance to the plot, let's move on to the next one. Equal screen time and roles for all of the crystal gems. A great flaw in Steven Universe is that they give many characters a shaft, even the main cast. Sure, Garnet, Amethyst, and Pearl have all gotten their development, but we know which one the narrative favorite. Pearl, it's a, uh, it's Pearl. Reunited did a great job of giving everyone a highlight moment, but I still think it left a lot to be desired when it came to everyone having an equal role and focus in said battle. Although I can't blame them, they only had 22 minutes and they wanted to give plenty of screen time to the Ruby and Sapphire wedding, which is beyond justified. I don't want this movie to just be Steven saves the day or Garnet saves the day, Pearl saves the day, Amethyst saves the day. I want everyone to have a reason for being there. Garnet, Amethyst, Pearl, 
Peridot, Lapis, Bismuth, Connie. If you're a crystal gem, you need your moment in this film. Even if it's something as simple as Bismuth constructs something that's vital to the plot, Peridot and her homeworld expertise gives insight on the villain or any new gem location they venture to. Lapis's water powers plays a vital role. Garnet and her future vision guides them to victory. Amethyst and Pearl's abilities come through at a vital moment. I think a great comparison of everyone in the scene playing a key role is the episode Earthlings, which is still one of my favorite episodes. I don't know if it's my number one favorite because of Reunited, but in Earthlings, Amethyst and Steven are vital to the episode due to the significant birth of Smoky Quartz, and Peridot wasn't just there to be there. It's because of her, Jasper was poofed. Who knows what would have happened if Peridot was unable to impel her. As we saw in Maid of Honor, Steven's bubble cannot go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a corrupted Quartz soldier, and Amethyst just barely poofed Biggs and cracked the whip. If they use that kind of teamwork in this movie, just finding unique ways for everyone to play a part and not just reduce our cast to glorified cameos, then I think viewers will be happy. Because who doesn't love their favorite character having a moment to shine? Next up, good action scenes and action storyboarders. If there's one thing Steven Universe can use some work on, it's definitely their action scenes. There's definitely highlights. The Crystal Gems vs. Lapis' Water Clones, Savani's sparring sequence in Mindful Education, and the Crystal Gems vs. Blue Diamond Reunited, and who can forget Alexandrite vs. Malachite? Me, I did just now. Whoops, that's actually debatably the greatest action sequence in the show. And I don't want this movie to just be walking around and talking things out. We got a new villain, I want a dynamic action sequence that has them go toe to toe with the villain. And considering that picture on the Crooner vs. Tumblr shows the third act being the biggest one in storyboards, I'm hoping we'll get just that. But a good action sequence is nothing without its storyboarders, so I hope they assigned accordingly. Now currently, the best action storyboarders on the show are Jeff Liu, Christine Liu, I'm not sure there's a relation there, and Mickey Brewster. Mickey has made a great impact on the show since her debut. Jungle Moon, Can't Go Back, and the Blue Diamond action sequence in Reunited, there is absolutely no doubt that she has the chops to carry out such a task. Not to mention Jeff is already one of the best storyboarders. As you could imagine, he handled Super Watermelon Island, Ocean Gem, Steven the Sword Fighter, Giant Woman, Bismuth, Gemma Hunt, just a lot of amazing action sequences. And Christine Liu handled a lot of the Pink Diamond stuff, and now we're only falling apart, alongside just amazing visual expressions in the episode Made of Honor. These three storyboarders bring such an anime-esque vibe to the show, and considering anime is one of the show's greatest influences, I wish every single episode could look like theirs. Now, the Cooniverse actually did bring on a lot of new people for the movie exclusively, and I'm not sure of all their art styles, but come on, guys, let's be real. The Cooniverse knows what looks amazing, so hopefully any action scenes will live up to their full potential. Not much to say here, but if they're already going big for a movie, they should go all out. But going all out doesn't mean just action scenes. But my next point, this movie should expand the world of Steven Universe. Again, this is something Save the Light excelled at. We got to see just how the light prisms were utilized in the gem war. Hess and I provided new gem ships, and we got to see a lot more of Business Forge. I want this movie to accomplish the same thing. Let's see some new environments. Let's go back into space. Maybe see a new gem colony. While I'm sure the movie's going to begin in Beach City, let's not stay in Beach City. Let's not go to the same five environments we've seen before. If we're going to go to Earth, I want to see some of the unexplored locations on Buddy Butwick's map. If we go into space, I want to be introduced to a brand new planet or a new gem station similar to the zoo. Having a solid adventure is already great, but I want to walk away learning something. What is this villain's role among Homeworld? How does her role expand the lore of the show? Make it mean something. However, at the same time, while I want it to expand the lore, I don't want it to be anything too crazy. Which leads me to my fifth point, a self-contained story. Again, something Save the Light was great at, aside from building off Attack the Light. While we got to see new environments and learn more about the gem war, Save the Light did not impact the show in a meaningful way. Yeah, it's canon. Yeah, everything in the game actually happened. And Hess and I's even name dropped in the show proper, as she was our Nephrite's commander. But we probably won't ever see Steven going, We need to find Hess and I. She can help us. Not sure why I did that voice. I think this movie should accomplish the same thing. You can go in having all the knowledge of the series you want, but making this movie something essential to watch to understand the rest of the show just seems kind of like a bad move. Not to mention, going back to how the show is greatly influenced by anime, I think this will play a lot like a shonen film, similar to My Hero Academia 2 Heroes or any of the One Piece movies or Naruto movies besides The Last. The Last being the movie called The Last Naruto the Movie, not The Last Naruto Movie, which is Boruto the Movie. Shonen films are almost always inconsequential to the actual story. They're fun one-off adventures with a new villain, but they're never game changers. Let the movie be as crazy and unique as it wants to be without shaping the status quo. Because
because by the same virtue, it kind of limits itself. Imagine how jarring it would have been if, say, the light did impact the story. If Steven busted out the light prism with no explanation. Or if Hesonite's campaign was mentioned every episode. Or if Square Dot was unbubbled and became a main character, you'd be like, well, psh, where's this girl from? I've seen a lot of theories that this movie will impact the show in a huge way, but if you guys are willing to trust me, believe me when I say it's better off being one off. See what I did there? Moving on, this movie needs to use fusions. I don't think it's to introduce a brand new fusion, unless they know we'll never see it in the show, like ever, ever. But if the gems are embarking on this adventure against a pretty significant threat. Again, if you're coming after White Diamond, you need to be a big deal. And if this movie does bring the new locations, this would be a great time to see fan favorite fusions like Stevani, Smoky Quartz, and Opal. Especially Opal. Slice of Otaku actually made a great video on how Opal got the shaft. I'm assuming this movie's budget is above the typical episode, so hopefully they can get in some great voice talents. But at the same time, the fusions weren't even voiced in Save the Light, so I may be too hopeful on which fusions we'll actually see. But just imagine Steven, Amethyst, and Pearl get separated from Garnet, Paradigm, Bismuth. And they're in an environment that requires them to be agile, an area where they need to stay close together. So they decide, hey, let's form Opal. It'll be easier to maneuver through this environment. Or the gems find them in a situation where they need to destroy things and fast. So they form Sugalite. Now, considering Savani has appeared in the show the most out of all the fusions, not including Garnet, obviously, I feel as if she's almost a shoe in for the film. And I'm not even saying the fusions need a star ceiling moment, or even need to be voiced. Just give us a quick sequence, just so they they're there. I know this somewhat contradicts with making the characters mean something, but I mean Smoky Quartz didn't need to appear in Back to the Kindergarten, but it was cooler that she did anyways. I would prefer the fusions mean something, and yes, throwing them in is complete fan service, but I feel as if a large scale adventure calls for fusions. It just goes hand in hand. You know what else in Steve Universe goes hand in hand with large scale adventures? My mom Musical numbers! This film needs to have some bangers. I almost feel like it's inevitability. I mean, most of the big episodes have musical numbers, and even some smaller ones. So I think we're guaranteed a few already, but better be safe than sorry. I'm putting it on the list. Please have business playing electric guitar. Please have business playing electric guitar. Please have business playing electric guitar. Next up, animation quality is important. And with Steve Universe, I've said it before and I'll say it again. There's a great studio and a bad studio. I explored this in my movie update, but someone is confirmed to be handling the movie, yet we don't know if Rough Draft, the other studio, is. I think for this movie to look as great as it possibly could be, it needs to be summon only. No Rough Draft at all. If you want an example of how bad Rough Draft is, like I said in my previous video, just find any shot of Rough Draft Steven from Reunited and Sunman Steven from Reunited. You'll see the difference. Sunman tends to be more on model. In fact, most of the complaints that Steven vs. Off Model usually uses a Rough Draft episode for comparison. Summon also has superior line def, character expressions, and the characters move a lot more fluid. And it doesn't just need the animation to look good, but it needs my next point. Incredible art direction. The backgrounds, the designs, the environments they go to. And the show already excels at this. I mean, the backgrounds are already breathtaking, but the movie should be on a whole nother level. Throw in that over the top spectacular shading that anime films have. I want this movie to look like Rugrats in Paris. All right, it probably won't look that good, as again, it's a TV movie movie, but still, give us that atmosphere of being above a typical TV episode. And last but not least, a good runtime. Alright, I know what you're thinking. It's a TV movie, of course it's gonna have a good runtime, but there's only so much you can do with a typical TV movie runtime. A TV movie can be anywhere from 44 minutes to a full 60. Now, Ed and Eddie's Pick Picture Show was actually around 90 minutes, bringing its television runtime to 2 hours, and while that'd be a dream for Steve Universe, I think we're gonna get a 90 minute television run slot, which is around an hour without commercials and I hope they can just tell a good three-act structure in such an amount of time. Although a great template for this would probably be the zoo arc of the show. It's five episodes, that's around an hour of runtime, and it has a great beginning, middle, and end. The zoo arc is still my favorite Steven Bomb for pacing alone. It's just formatted so perfectly. Whatever runtime the network allows them, I just hope it's enough to accomplish what they're setting out to do. I don't want the beginning, middle, and definitely the ending to feel rushed at all. I want all of them to be at an appropriate pace. So many films that make it into theaters feel like their third act especially is rushed. Steven Universe does not deserve that, but I have faith in its crew. And a little bonus one you can consider is the Lem thing, but it does not make or break the movie at all, but a little prequel or tie-in episode would be great. Something that sets the stage for the movie without disrupting the entire canon of the show. Let's say Steven and the Crystal Gems go on vacation in the beginning of the film. Have an episode that sets up that vacation. Or if a gem artifact is integral to the movie's plot, have an episode about that gem artifact. 
It would be a great way to promote the movie and the show proper, and it's something Carnero has actually done before. Regular show has an episode that sets up the movie, the antagonist of the film, Mordecai and Rigby's former gym teacher, actually makes an appearance. And Conan Kinnick's story had an entire episode in England that sets up Operation Zero. Number Zero himself is mentioned, and Cartoon Network took full advantage of using clips from this episode in promotion for the movie. Little things like that just makes the movie itself that much better. And there you have it folks, the 10, or 11, things that the Steven Universe movie needs to reach its full potential. Do you agree with this list? What things do you feel as if the movie needs to be great? Let us know in the comments below, or tweet your thoughts to me at AustricVox or at RoundtableVids. We're also on Instagram. If you want to help the Roundtable grow, support us on Patreon, so we can make our videos bigger and better. Link in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please do a like, share, and if you're new here, subscribe. Hit that bell for notifications to stay in the loop of all things Steven. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have an awesome day. AustricVox, out. <laughs> Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha